There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch, in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, in Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350. And throughout Europe, there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us, seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools? It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization having crudely cut these tunnels, possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. Edinburgh, Scotland, a very ancient land with a castle built upon an extinct volcano. Many mysterious things lay and possibly live within Scotland, the most famous of which undoubtedly the extremely elusive Loch Ness Monster. However, Recent surveys would suggest that among the most popular of attractions are in fact its vast collection of, to the well-trained eye, extremely ancient coves and cave systems. Hand-cut, these caverns will demonstrate the immense skill, determination, and of course ingenuity of our distant ancestors, revealing to all those who are lucky enough to visit them just what these ancient people were capable of and hidden behind a modest door on Drum Street in Gilmerton, is quite possibly the most incredible network of them all. Underground passageways, large, perfectly carved chambers, benches, tables, and even a small chapel, all painstakingly hewn from solid stone by hand. And thankfully, due to their popular attraction with tourists, often the explorers amongst us Many open-minded individuals have often been left with a sense of discomposure regarding the officially upheld explanation for their origins. As such, and rather predictably, 
many alternative theories, often involving a far more ancient origin for the cove and its purpose now abound. The mass-regurgitated view regarding the construction would suggest that a blacksmith by the name of George Patterson, who actually resided within the cove within the 18th century, somehow created them alone, by hand, and within a mere five-year period with even George himself claiming to have cut this extensive, elaborate, and unquestionably enigmatic underground structure using simple hand tools. Since the claims three centuries ago, however, numerous holes have been seemingly discovered within this popularly upheld sequence of events, fueling the already prevalent suspicions within skeptic parties, maybe in an attempt to hide its true antiquity, as we experience so often during our research. On Wednesday, the 15th of August, 1906, a front-page column by a writer known as F. R. Coles for The Scotsman dug into George Patterson's version of events, commonly referred to as the tradition. Coles found it to have been nothing but a fictional fallacy, possibly created by George himself in an attempt to profit from deception. It seems Patterson not only accomplished the seemingly impossible, excavating hundreds of tons of stone but also it seems he successfully went unnoticed by the entire surrounding population during this entire procedure. Just who could have built Gilmerton Cove? When was it built? Why did they build it? With modern radar scans of the surrounding area indicating that even more systems lay close by, still undiscovered, possibly isolated by ancient cave-ins, you have to wonder, could the Gilmerton Cove be far older and originally far grander and extensively larger than anyone today could have ever possibly imagined. Will we ever solve the mystery of Gilmerton Cove? It seems only time will tell. We recently covered the astonishing and largely unexplained ancient temple known as Kailash, which quietly sits within India, a temple cut out from a solid rock with such precision, such vision and accuracy it is a feat we would struggle to recreate even to this day, clearly demonstrating an ancient high technology that has undoubtedly been lost over the millennia. Could this temple actually be evidence left by a far older group of people, a remnant left by a far more advanced civilization than that which academia will allow us to publicly discuss within many modern fields of study? Within the Baraba and Nagajuni hills of the Jihanabad district of India sits another series of rock-cut features. Six crudely cut caves, carved into large stones, which litter the surrounding hillsides. They could be seen as crude and possibly more modern attempts to recreate what can be found on the top of the hill. Known as the Lomas Rishi Cave, cut into an enormous rock, it is the only one out of the many within the area which demonstrates a level of refinement which, literally, boggles the mind. The only cave in the area that has a delicately cut entrance, but also an interior which has seemingly been protected from the elements, perfectly preserved in its original state, demonstrating a state of rock cutting which has left the rock polished to a mirror-smooth finish. Evidence reinforcing the postulation that this cave, and additionally Kailash Temple, are remnants left by a far older and once far more advanced culture than officially accepted. The hut-style facade at the entrance to the cave is officially accepted as the earliest example of the ogi-shaped Chaicha Arch or Chandra Shala that was to be an important feature of Indian rock-cut architecture and sculptural decoration for centuries during its post-cataclysmic development. The example here is largely accepted as the specific influence for later examples, of which there are many at later Buddhist sites, such as Ajanta Caves and Kala Caves in Maharashtra. How, or indeed who, cut the Lomas Rishi Cave? How did they achieve such an amazing finish to the stonework? Were these same people responsible for the construction of the Kailash Temple? also another structure exquisitely cut out of a giant solid stone. Although modern academically accepted views state that they were created during the reign of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoki, a Buddhist ruler from the 3rd century BC who ruled over almost the entire country of India, 
caves known as Sat Gava were carved into the hills for the use of the monks, Lomas Rishi Cave being said to have been one of them. Yet due to its exquisite quality, it's hard to see just how they can claim this. Since the rediscovery of what is unquestionably the most puzzling, astounding, and enigmatic site on Earth, the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx of Giza, we have been led to believe that what could be described as an astonishingly accurate yet somewhat vandalistic later addition was once put there by a caliph named al mamun Now popularly known by its coin title, al mamuns Forced Entrance, this title, although argued as his work, has a pretty compelling tale attached to its possible original purpose. When one actually looks into what an incredible achievement this tunnel once was, it becomes apparent that it was cleverly bored by an ancient people, far more advanced than a 9th century caliph. Additionally, possible hypotheses have been put forth as to its origins by individuals who may have known of entrances into the pyramid. We in the modern world have either lost knowledge of or have been prevented from knowing about their existence. Hinged doorways made of stone perfectly counterbalanced to allow an average-sized man to open and close them. Doorways along the structure's north face that, when closed, become seemingly indistinguishable from its surroundings. Are there still secret entrances along the pyramid's northern side? Quote, the Great Pyramid, a little way up on one side, has a stone that may be taken out, which being raised up, there is a sloping passage to the foundations. End quote. Written by Strabo in Pyramids and Temples of Giza, Flinders Petri. Yet regardless of these additional, highly compelling investigative leads put forward in addition to an explanation for the tunnel's existence, its remarkable accuracy remains a tough thing for supporters of academia's tale of events to explain. As author Ralph Ellis puts it, quote, The main problem with the classical explanation was that Maman's tunnel is rather too accurate for comfort. It tracks into the pyramid in a direct line for the all-important junction between the descending and ascending passageways. It is often cited that Maman had to turn the tunnel sharp left to discover the original passageways, a fact that Ralph had in the back of his mind when they first visited the Great Pyramid. But he ambled down the forced tunnel, rather mystified, because the left turn cited in the literature could not be found. Having backtracked the tunnel and to try again, that left turn seemed to be no more than a slight widening of the tunnel. In fact, the digging was almost right on target." End quote. For how does one know where one is when deep within the passages of such an incredibly huge ancient structure? Secondly, if instead argued as having been started from without, the same problem has to be solved. For how did one know how to create the initial angle? Although it is now the most used entrance and although it has been drawn upon countless plans, to draw an existing tunnel's precise line of descent is far more easier than to have created said precise angle in the first place. And within the Great Pyramid is the remaining half of what has often been used to create a compelling, possible explanation for this tunnel's original purpose. Known as the sarcophagus of Khufu, an anomalous object found within the pyramid, an artifact we have covered in the past, no one can explain how this giant stone object came to be within the pyramid. It would not have fit through the existing entrance tunnels. However, at some time in the pyramid's life, someone smashed into this stone box, took its past contents and the sarcophagus lid, an object that would also have not fit round the turns of the existing tunnel system, yet would have fit through the force tunnel and due to the vandalistic nature of the tunnel itself, could be argued that this damage to the sarcophagi was inflicted by the same group of individuals who built the tunnel one used to extract the so-called sarcophagus's lid. Is this the real past purpose of the tunnel? And if created by a caliph in the 9th century, how did he tunnel so accurately on target? And additionally, where is this lid now? Was this tunnel, 
like the many different layers of casing stones indicate, built by a later yet also lost civilization, one who flourished far before even the ancient Egyptians. We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Many ancient sites found scattered all over the planet share an enigmatic feature. A pattern of scarring left upon their megalithic blocks and often upon their walls, once left by a technology built by an as yet not understood civilization. We've previously covered the perplexing technique often used by ancient wall builds, found all around the world in the form of mysterious metal clamps. Used to seat huge stone blocks as they settled over the following years, these clamps, dated to similar times within antiquity and varying in style from continent to continent, somehow turned up all over the world at around the same time, strongly suggesting some form of intercontinental travel and thus sharing of technologies. Furthermore, and perhaps more intriguing, are the links that we, here on the channel, along with others in alternative research, and even funded institutes from nations around the world, have begun to notice and hopefully triangulate a signature left by this once highly advanced group of individuals. The most noticeable of these sites, and the one which initially started us upon this journey, was Long Yu Cave in China. A cave system hewn from solid bedrock, leaving no waste piles of stone anywhere marking the stone with a telltale scar pattern. These parallel marks are not just found at Longyu. Similar yet not identical marks have also been found elsewhere on Earth. A slight variation in style is what one would expect with shared knowledge. As with the metal clamps, a slight variation can be found from continent to continent. These similar marks can also be found at the ancient quarry of Yangshan, China, and Petra in Jordan, and both argued for years to actually be the workmanship of a civilization far older than any noted within modern academia. These marks were then discovered to be upon the ceiling of Cave 1 at the ancient site of Mamalapuram within India, another site which in places shows levels of erosion far in excess of that which should be seen at a site dated within known history. Yet perhaps the most impressive of these marks, and most probably the ones made by the conceptual machine of origin, are the scars witnessed and now subsequently catalogued at Baalbek. These are far too large for any hand tool, made into solid granite with such precision. These also display circular motions, as if left by a modern-day tunnel boring machine. This evidence, undoubtedly unnoticed upon many more ancient sites, is clearly compelling evidence to support our channel's hypothesis that a mysterious history once occurred here on our planet, and will hopefully shed some light on the amazing people responsible for this phase of our past. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. Lake Mead within Nevada, home to the famous Hoover Dam, one of the largest man-made concrete structures on Earth, and what many feel will be the last surviving remnant of our civilization's existence on this planet. Although it is also home to a number of other lesser-known yet just as astonishing feats of human engineering. Similar to that of the incredible finds we have previously covered, an ancient mine, and although we know it was created for the collection of salt, the date of its creation remains a mystery with evidential examples of activity within this mine, not only by a now lost civilization, but one that easily predated even that of the Native American himself. As mentioned in the Scientific American of 1926, quote, Mines were operating in Nevada many centuries before the days of Aurora and Piyush of Virginia City. One of the discoveries made by archaeologists now delving into the ruins of Pueblo Grande. Many centuries is putting it mildly, for the finds show that mining was in progress at the beginning of the Christian era, some 20 centuries ago, and there are strong indications which point to work created at an even earlier period. End quote. Mysterious circular carving, reminiscent of those of Baalbek, Aswan, Bazda Caves, Longyu, etc., are present within the mine, and although it is claimed these were made with stone picks, a true explanation as to the real technology or tools used to liberate this salt is yet to be discovered, yet the reasoning behind such circular carving has seemingly been unraveled by a fine at the bottom or oldest parts of the mine. 
The salt was seemingly isolated in these circular carving marks as they became deeper and deeper. Then the center block of rock salt was believed to have been broken off by hand and taken out by the miners. What is truly astonishing about this mine is its size. Although initial investigations of the cavern were to identify its purpose, this salt mine has since been bought by industries invested in salt production due to its quality. Yet the mystery surrounding how these ancient people discovered this vault of salt, or indeed how they carved their way through an entire mountain in its pursuit, if we assume them to have been primitive in nature and ability, remains an absolute enigma. However, if one were to allocate such feats to a more developed human state, identifying this huge deposit of salt, and indeed the adaptive stone-cutting technologies we feel were clearly used elsewhere, incorporated into this mining process, and explain how they managed to dig to such depths here, and indeed at other astonishing ancient sites the world over, are rather easier to explain. Yet, I digress. Regardless of our own suspicions as to how this incredible mine was created, its existence alone, we feel, is proof that those responsible had far more knowledge and capabilities than modern man gives them credit for. It is an incredibly ancient mine, one in which we and indeed many others within our field find incredibly compelling.